Okay, so let's do a layout and angle. This is for the benefit mostly of some of my analog circuits for music synthesis students who are about to lay out a PCB. What I figured I would just do is I'll just pull up something and lay it out in Eagle. So I'll start by entering a schematic and then we'll probably in another video generate the PCB. So I thought, uh, let's take a look at the Korg MS-50. This is an expansion for the MS-10 and MS-20 series. Uh, let's see here, something that's not too terrible to do. Oh, okay, let's do this. This is, I think, the modulation VCA. And the reason they're saying that is that this is designed to be able to pass DC and not just audio signals. So, all right, let's see. We're using 5.5, five, sorry, 4.558 op amps. Those are kind of like, I guess it's like a dual version of the 741, maybe better. Not the world's most sophisticated high quality op amp, but uh, it's good enough for rock and roll. So let's do add. I'm, I'm going to type a lot of the commands because I find it actually faster than going over here. The thing to remember about Eagle is that all the symbols you see over here map to text commands. So I'm going to say add star 4558 star as well cards. And let's see what pops up. Okay, there's a linear library and a 5558 library. So let's see what the difference is. Surface mount, we don't want that. Wait a minute, that's kind of, what is that? That is not an op amp. Okay, so let's take a look here. Ah, here we go. <laughs> there are some op amps. Uh, linear. Ah, here's the surface mount. Here's the dip. It's a dual op amp. So we'll plunk that down here. And uh, let's plunk down a couple of these guys. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's see. Now, the way it's drawn the schematic, the negative is at the top. And that's usually actually the way I prefer to look at op amps anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror both of these guys. And then let's do rot for rotate, and I'll rotate them both around to have them the way I expect to see them. All right, so we do have a bunch of resistors. I have a favorite resistor for that. So I can use add, and I can type in whatever. Here I'm going to type in, I have my little cheat sheet, a little cheat sheet over here, r-us, because I like the squiggly zigzaggy symbol. The European library uses these just boxes that I find less interesting. 0207, that's the size of the resistor. The um, slash 10 here, that's sort of how long the leads are. So let's add that. Uh, oh, Adafruit has their own version of it. I have that library installed. Let's go with the RCL library. These are probably the same. When you're picking resistors or just any parts, you always want to make sure in Eagle that you're picking one that also has a physical package for the PCB associated with it, and that you're not just picking, trying to pick some generic resistor part that doesn't have a package with it that will come back to haunt you later. Eagle is owned by Autodesk now, so apparently there's some synergy with Fusion 360. I haven't really experimented with that, but some of these will have a 3D package. A lot of them don't, though. Okay, so we have a standard inverting configuration. Okay, so we'll go up here. Stick that up here. One is going into the minus sign. Now, sometimes I have doubts about the best way to do this. Here, I'm going to put that right there, and then I'm going to use this move. So I could type move, or I could click on the move thing here. Pick that up. Notice in order to pick it, actually move the part, I have to click its little reference point here in the middle. If I move this guy here, I can move the label. But right now, I really want to just move the part. So notice I moved it out a little bit so you can see the screen wire connecting it. You can also wire, here's net. So I'm going to connect this in that feedback configuration like this, like so. There's also a resistor to ground. It doesn't go straight to ground. So something like this, it's probably compensating for non-ideal op amp effects. The 4558 has a BJT input. It is going to sink in some current. And it's not something like uh, TLO72 that will have JFET input that would have a really high input impedance and very little current flowing. This guy will have current flowing through here. And if you usually see a resistor like this, say, to ground here, this is just there to compensate for non-ideal op amp effects. So let's add them in. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy. So I'm going to use the copy command to grab this resistor. I'm going to hold control and click to flip it sideways. And I could put it in like this here directly. But I like to move it out a bit and see a bit of green, just so I can really have a sense that they're connected. Often you can get a situations where you think a couple of parts are connected, but they're really not. So let's see. Okay, so let's add a ground symbol. 
I'm a big fan. I don't like this triangle one because I think people, it's very easily mistaken for a negative supply. Same with that one. Let's go. I like this one. For Eagle, it's nice, flat. It's no fuss, no muss. Now, the newer version of Eagle does put that ground there. I'm going to actually type Dell for delete to delete the ground label there because we, we pretty much know what it is. Let's see. Okay, so I've got, ah, oh, this is a, so, so this is basically a vectoral setup. So I have a light emitting diode that shining on a light dependent resistor, and that's how it effectively changes the gain in the circuit. Another place you'll see a lot of this is in um, Don Buchla's designs. So let's take a look here. Let's see. Uh, I, a while back, it did make a Vactral library, but I think there may be uh, some built into Stock Eagle now. Ah, here we go. There's the 9 and the 10. They're basically the same. So we can pick any of these symbols and then put it whatever Vactral we, we would like to put in there later. We can just you know, delete the name and rename it. We don't have to make a new library. So what we'll do here is, yeah, let's just pick this one. And, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the resistor, try to have the resistor go up here, going in there like this. Okay, so the wire here, where did my wires go? I'm going to connect this up to that resistance. And then... That's going to connect to the negative input of the second op amp. I think I can type net. Yeah, net's the command for that. And uh, just hook that right in there. Oh, there's notice that 470 ohm resistor there. That's basically protection for the output in case you hook the user puts hooks two outputs together. Maybe they accidentally take the signal output and short it to ground on a metal panel or something. So I'm going to use copy. There's a copy here, copy. So I could also click on that. We'll copy this resistor over here. I'm actually going to put it a little bit out. I, I could dro drop it right here. Whoop, I'm still good in copy mode. Let me undo that. Let me put in a net, go back to net. So I'll connect that here. We're eventually going to hook a resistor, or actually a couple things in the feedback. So I'm just going to stop this line here and come back to it. There's a 2.2K resistor in the feedback loop. So let's copy this up here. Oh, and there is a, a variable resistor there that looks like it's for, this is a scaling factor. This is probably not a front panel control. This is probably a, a trim pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use, um, oh, let me show you how to how to use the add menu too. So I, I, I've been typing add, but you can also go down here and just say add a part. It's the same thing as typing add. So here, let's search on, I've got my cheat sheet over here for trim pots, like things that are really trim pots. I like to use trim underscore US dash S63P. This is something they have a lot of in the um, stock room of the electrical engineering uh, educational labs at Georgia Tech. So let's get that. Yeah, so it's got this nice little footprint here. Let's see, how is this wired up? Okay, so we'll put it like this. There's no real indication of the direction of the pot. I don't think it really matters. And to make this look good, so I'm going to do, I'm going to move some stuff over. So let me group. So I clicked here for group. I'm going to grab all of this stuff. And now I'm going to cl control click on it and go down to, oh, okay. No, they, they changed the way this works. I should be able to just click and drag the whole thing. Okay. Used, you, used to, you would have to control click and move group, blah, blah, blah. It's a little slicker now. So I'll put the pot over here. Let's see. How is this wired? Ah, Okay. So the way this is drawn here is they, whoop. Let's m connect this over here. Ah, come back here. There you go. And we'll wire this to here like that. And this whole thing can move over a little bit. I think I overdid that. Let's move you over here too. Do I like the way this looks? Yeah, I like that. Okay. 
So we'll take this resistor here. And again, you can put these together right here. But I like to see, a, often like to see a little green in between. It's just sort of a reminder to make sure these really are indeed connected and I didn't accidentally just put these next to each other. It's, it's sort of a safety blanket for me. And let's go back to net so we can connect this thing through. There you go. I kind of like the way that looks. Actually, let's just scoot that over a bit. So I'm going to group the whole thing. And uh, let's go bloop. Do I like the... Oh, <laughs> I accidentally moved the name too. Let's go with it like that. I like the way that looks better. I don't want to put these right on top of each other. You can. It just sort of, again, it helps me keep track of what's hooked to what. Or more to the point, make sure that what I think is hooked to things is actually more hooked to things. Now, I'm going to cheat here a little bit. Uh, this is VTL5C9. Usually, the, the one that Don Buchla used a lot, I, I have no idea what's in the original Korg. It might just be like an LDR and a bare LED that they took individually and just like put duct tape around or something. Anyway, I'm just going to delete that name, and I'm going to use type. So, uh, no, text, sorry, text. And, well, VTL5C3. Uh, just because it was Don Buchla's favorite, so we'll put it in here too. And if I really cared, I could change the layer and <laughs> change the color, but I don't, so we'll just keep going there. Okay, so that was a cheap way of using the symbol from the library that's, you know, similar to what you actually want, and even if the actual name's not exact, who cares? All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. This guy's grounded, so I'm going to copy. Copy over here to the ground. You can stick it there, or you can drop it down here, or I might move it over there a bit like that. It all works. Uh, what about the inputs of the outputs? Now, if you were building this, maybe it's a guitar effect where you actually have, you know, you're doing a production run, and you, you actually have PCB-mounted quarter-inch jacks, or maybe you're you're building this as a commercial modular synth panel where you know exactly what the layouts of the knobs and the the jacks are, and you're making that part of the actual PCB itself and mounting that on the PCB. Doing something like this, I want to be a little more agnostic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically put essentially header pins, just points on the PCB that will lay out near the edge that later you can then hook wires from the PCB to whatever jacks or switches or knobs you want. So that's the approach we're going to take here. And for this, I actually have a library element I created myself called offboard something. Oh, it's called offboard. Oh, let me move this up so you can see it. There you go. Um, offboard to jack alt. <laughs> I have another one called Offboard to Jack and some other libraries. I had an Aaron library that I I lost and then basically had to reconstruct bits by exporting things out of designs I had done. Let's put that here at the output. I could leave it here. It's fine. I'm going to move it out a bit. I'm going to copy the same thing. Uh, let's flip it around. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's copy, put over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror. So I can use the, I can either type mirror or click on the mirror here, flip that guy around. Let's move it here, click. That should be connected. Let me move it out to make sure. Again, most people would leave it like this, and I often probably will. I just like, uh, another thing is if you need to add something later, this can sort of make it easier to do that. Let's copy a ground. So this particular symbol here, let me actually show you uh, why I like it. Um, let me do add. And then let me search on this off board. I should probably upload this little library and put a link to it. That would probably make people happy. The reason I like this, I rigged this up a while back. Uh, so I have different kinds of pads for the signal and the ground. And it sort of gives you this little visual indication of which is which, which is why I made it and why I like it. Okay, so let's name some things. This is going to be the audio input jack. They call it in, well, it may not be audio, it may be a control voltage. Let's call this, oh, how am I doing this? I'm going to use name. I can't click here. I have to, have to click on the anchor for the part itself. So let's call it S-I-N, signal in for sin. Okay, there we go. That was that's about as exciting as it gets around here. 
let's call this out for signal out. And it's not just necessarily audio. It could be a control voltage signal here that we're controlling an amplitude with, with amplitude control. Oh, there's so much yawning here at 2.39 in the morning. Oh, if you're looking for something that's going to be professionally edited, uh, this will probably not be the right place to go. All right. Let's also change the name. Uh, there is a way to... Uh, which one? Ah, here we go. This little thing that says R2, that's the same thing as changing names. So let's click on that. What I want to do is I want this to match up with the... Uh, let's match this up with this one here. So this one, core code R12. This one's R10. This one's R13. Again, if I wanted the same tool, I could type name. Uh, this one is VR3. Okay. Uh, let me move that. It, why did I put it down there? Okay, we'll put that up here. And again, that's VR3. Name. This one is R14. And the... Oh, and this one down here, that's R11. This one to ground here. So we'll do this R11. Uh, R11. All right, there we go. Uh, what about the values of the resistor? So for that, I could type value. And what I'm going to do is, so this one's 100K. This one's 75K. This one's 2.2K. And now I want to show you a, a common notation you'll see on many schematics that I'm fond of, which is what we're going to do is, because there's a decimal point in it, we'll replace the decimal point with the unit. Instead of writing 2.2K, I'm going to write... 2k2. And the reason that's useful is you think about what happens to decimal points when things are Xeroxed or especially back in the day if it when some sort of blueprint style um, mimeograph process. If you're old enough to remember when most say public schools didn't actually have a Xerox machine or if they did they were super exotic specialized things but teachers had mimeograph machines and my mother who was a school teacher actually had one in, in our basement that she would use. There was this really uh, interesting smelling chemicals that they would use to do this, and you would turn, you know, usually hand crank this thing, and it would spit out. It, either it would be color blue or um, color purple, the other one would get. Teachers would pass these out, and they would tell you to not to sniff the dittos. Um, that maybe explains something about my generation. I'm a Gen Xer. Anyway, Something like a decimal point will readily disappear over a photocopying process. The point here might get sucked into the number two or something. So if you accidentally later, if it looks something like this, and you're like, oh, was that 2.2K or no, nah, that was 22K. If you start losing decimal points, it can get awkward. So by putting this K in place of the decimal point, it's less likely to get lost. Uh, what about the pot here? So the pot here is in fact a 22K. I want value. If you don't want to type value, you can, there's a tool here. Ah, it's the tool that has the little 10K here. So the R2 is the name, the 10K is the value. So that's 22K. What about the output that's 470 ohm? So here's a good idea. We're going to use R to represent ohm. Uh, you don't want to just leave a resistor value sitting there as 470 because then people are going to wonder, oh, well, did they forget the K. So if you put R, everybody knows you need, mean ohm. M is uh, for mega. Now you want to be very careful if you're using spice. I think I, I've gotten bitten by this before. I think M like is interpreted as mella and you have to do something else for mega. I, I don't remember. I'd have to go look that up, but you got to be careful with the units and spice. Anyway, this is a 470 ohm, so we're going to make that R. Oh wait, what is this one to ground? It's 47K. So let's do 47K on this guy. And this all looks pretty good. So I can move the labels around and try to make it look prettier. The main thing, this is, um, let's see, it doesn't look so great having this. Ah, uh, let's sure, let's put it here. Or I know, I'll put the name of the chip or the, the designator of the specific chip here, IC1B, and then the, it's a 4558. A bunch of people make 4558s. There's JRC. It's a fairly common chip. So nothing magical about the LM per se. Uh, put this guy up here. Now, you'll notice the pinout here. Later on, if when you're making the PCB, there is a, a swap gate command that will let you take... Uh, no, what's the swap? Or is it gate swap? Yeah. So I can do this. I can click on this and click on that and see how it just switched the A and the B. 
that's something I usually don't do willy nilly. It, it's sort of like if you have a hex inverter, let's use flip the inverters around. Other than later when you do the PCB design, sometimes you'll discover that, oh, it'll be easier if I swap these because of which side the pins happen to be on. So, But I usually, usually don't mess with something like that at the schematic stage. All right, so what else do we have in here? Okay, so we've got a, we have got the control input here. So, so I'll say copy. Uh, so I've got the input. I'm also going to copy. Let's copy the output here. Or at it, we'll copy the grounds. We'll change the name of these. Notice when I copy them, it turned into a one. So this is going to be CVN for a control voltage. And what did they call it? Oh, okay. Control N. Uh, yeah, we'll say control N. For that, we'll say C out for control out. I like that. We've got a little divide down ladder hitting the base. All right, so that's a couple of resistors. I feel like moving that around down for no particular reason. All right, uh, let's group this guy because I've got a resistor and a ground together. So let's copy that whole mess. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so Eagle can be annoying. So here... Now I grouped it, so now I'm going to say, I'm going to click on copy. Here's copy. Now I'm going to control click on it. So instead of going to just say copy, I'm going to say copy group. This is a very annoying eagle -y thing. So we'll put that there, make some room for the input resistor. All right. Yump. Yump. Again, I'm being a little overly precious about keeping distance between the parts to see the green wire. Uh, most of the time I might not bother, but it's it's something that I often find useful. Same thing here. I'll, I'll move each of these down a bit. I'll move this one down a bit. Oh, let me show you another fun tool here. There is a, where did it go? There's a tool that lets you sort of bin lines. Ah, here you go. Aha, there we go. It's this split command. Ah, we've got a diode. So if you see 1 in 914, you can, I don't think that's built into Eagle, you can use a 1 in 4148. They're basically identical for all intents and purposes. So let's add 1 in 4148. Uh, okay, uh, 1 in 4148. Let's see. Oh, I, can, I see, because it, it, it's got some different versions of it. There's this one in the Adafruit library. That's kind of nice. Let's see how it's different. Oh, you know what? I do like this Adafruit one. And the reason is, is that the diode symbol here, notice has pretty wide pads. The Adafruit one's got smaller pads. You know what? I like that one. Uh, the Adafruit library has a lot of great stuff in it that either you don't find in Stock Eagle or there are ones that uh, Lady Ada... Uh, a little more free to end her, her, or various bits of her crew probably, uh, customized. And I like that one. So let's, let's go with that one actually. So let's see which way is this going. Okay. So this is, this is acting as a clamp. We'll stick that there. Joop. Do not hook this guy up. Do, 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 do. Copy ground. Hook this guy up. I could have just put it right there. All right. Oh, okay. So now we need to go up to the LED. So the... Oh, we always get one. I always get mixed up, which is the cathode and which is the anode. So I think the long part here is the cathode because that's where the current's flowing to. Now, in reality, so, so that's where the double E style current is flowing to. The actual physics style current is the electrons are flowing opposite direction of the arrow. But in double E, we like to think of the current as flowing opposite of the direction of the actual electrons. And yeah, it's confusing. So I think this is anode. I think this is the cathode. I'll put in a note later in case I got that wrong. I'm an electrical engineering professor. I should know that. I think it's the cathode here. I hope it's the cathode is hooked to the positive supply. Oh, we need to make supply voltages. And we'll, we'll come back to that. So let's add 
V plus. And there's different ones. I like this one. It's just a little arrow, kind of an assuming. So we'll have this positive supply going over to the anode here. And the cathode is going down through a 1K resistor. We'll, we'll go back and, and change the, the names and the values of the resistors later. Oh, now this is interesting. Here's just a basic transistor, 2C, or it's probably C1685. So let's see if that's built in uh, 1685. It's not. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here and go look up the pinout of this, and we'll just pick another transistor with the same pinout. Okay, so it looks like it's not super common now, but there are places. Here's a Futurelic that will sell you a 2SC1685 for a reasonable price. Uh, let's check the data sheet. I want to see what the pinout is. I I'm sure that this transistor, this MPN transistor, is not super critical. So let's look at the pinout. We can find... Oh... Oh, see, see, this is this disturbs my sense of how the universe should be. The designers of this transistor decided to put the base all the way on the edge. I think transistors should have the base in the middle. BJT should have the base in the middle. And how they do the middle and the collector, okay, yeah, that varies from transistor to transistor, but no matter what happens, the base should be in the middle. So I'm going to just assume that this isn't super critical. I'm going to make it go away. And let's just use... Let's just use a 2N3904 NBN transistor. Oh, I've got a variety to choose from here. Do they have different symbols? Uh, more or less the same thing. How about... Oh, let me move this over so you can see it. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, hmm. Yeah, they, they just differ. Oh, here it just differs by the where it... Well, I guess the symbol's a little bit different. Don't really like the way that one looks, so let's use um, this one. It's just transistor, the simplest, most no muss, no fuss. All right, so we'll put that in here. So usually I want, let me move this down a little bit. Um, to get this to line up with the base, I'll group. And then because we're using the modern eagle, I should be able to just click and drag. Oh, there we go. Okay, that worked. And I will use net to manually wire this in. Just to make this a little bit more compact, I'll move this whole thing over a little bit like that. Okay, I like that. Do 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 do. Move the diode reference over here. Oh, that's interesting. It isn't showing the 4148 name. If I smash it, does it? No, huh. Well, everybody knows that's a small signal diode. We'll just leave that there. Okay, so we've got a couple of resistors here, one going to ground, one going to negative supply. Okay, so we'll copy the resistors here. Do to do to do, do. I'll put a copy here. And again, I could just leave that there, but I like to leave some space here. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go down a little bit further to make a, a clear junction point. Again, you don't have to do this being a little pedantic. So we'll hook this in here. I've, I have a joint that I can see here that's not, you know, right here sitting on one of the, the pins. And so I've got less of a doubt about what's actually connected. If you're ever concerned, what you usually do is just pick up a, uh, pick up a part, move it around, and then you can quickly see what's connected or not connected, and then you can undo it. So let's see, let's copy a ground. We'll put the ground over here. With the same style, let me move that out a bit. Oh, and here we're going to need a negative supply. So let's do V minus. And we'll pick this one to keep the same standard. Do, 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 do. Move. Scoosh it down. So there's our V plus and our V minus. All right. And um, wait, there's not, there's not a control out. What am I talking about? All right. So... Zoom to fit, kind of see what's going on here. Oh, I need to change the resistor names and values to match. So I've got R17, R19. It's R17, R19. 
The one over here is R. Oh, that is D1. That's convenient. Uh, this is R18 and R16. What about the values? I've got 10K and 100K. This is 10K. Uh, value, this one's 100K. I've got 1K and 33K. 1K and 33K. What about up here? This one up here is 1K. And the name of it is R15. All right, so let me zoom in down on here and see if I uh, got all that. Again, you could try to make this a little bit look better and clean it up, but it looks pretty good. Uh, let me move the transistor type over here. I feel no guilt about swapping out the transistor um, to an... 2N3904 is extremely common. Oh, but they called it a T. I don't feel like it should be a T. I feel like it should be a Q, but I guess they called it TR even. So if you really wanted to be authentic to the schematic. Okay, to change the name, I have to click on that. Let's call it TR1 because that's what they call it over here. Although, of course, we're not using the same transistor, but we'll call it good enough. We're now faking that Korg style. All right, I think I got all the pieces in. Oh, you know what? An important thing is is save. Save your work. Let's call this, uh, this is the MS, it's the MS50, this is the MVCA. I think it's called M because it can then handle modulated signals. There's no, there's no AC coupling capacitors that only pass AC, or I should say, there's no coupling capacitors that are blocking DC anywhere in this path. The MS50 does have another voltage-controlled amplifier. That one, though, can only handle audio. It does have DC blocking caps in the signal path. And that one's really interesting. That one uses a diode bridge. The voltage-controlled filter and the MS50 also uses a diode bridge. And that's interesting because it matches some earlier Korgs, like the Korg 700 and 770. But, but it doesn't match the actual... Um, VCF or VCA in the MS10 or MS20. So not sure why they use those diode bridges in the MS50. Kind of strange. Also, that that kind of style, that was actually patented by Yamaha, I believe. It, it's used in the GX1. So I don't know if Korg paid uh, royalties to Yamaha or if just nobody noticed or not sure what's going on there. See, so I think I got all the resistors in there. Got them all named and with the correct values. So the last thing I need to do is to actually hook up power. So the MS50 runs off of a plus minus 15 volt supply. So I think it makes sense to use an MOTM power standard, uh, Paul Schreiber standard. Uh, this is also used by uh, John Blassett. Um, the MOTM, let me look at my cheat sheet over here. It's MTA. So it's a mol polarized Molex connector for pin. And it's an Eagle as MTA 04156. Let me plunk that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it to put the pin one at the top. And then I'm going to mirror it to flip it around. And uh, something I picked up from Paul Schreiber of MOTM is to use these uh, ferrite beads. And these block RF from getting into the board. I think they also provide a, a tiny bit of resistance that you'll often see at the Entrance of power to the board. Well, let me rename this already. Let's call this POW2 for power. And so I'm going to add, let me look at my cheat sheet. Uh, these are going to be inductors with the U.S. inductor symbol 0207. I, I like the, the curly inductor symbol in the U.S. library. The European version of this is just a, a filled in rectangle instead of an empty rectangle. So I'm, I'm not fond of that. But I like this. Yeah, I like that. I like this curly style. So let's get this curly style. It seems to be the same thing, two different libraries in here. Let's use RCL. Do, 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 do. Let's see, how should I handle this? I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to move these out a bit. Doop. Doop. Then let's add some electrolytic bypass capacitors just going for for going into the board. So this will be at the power connector. So for this I like to use C pole dash EUE 1.8 dash four. Again it shows up in a couple of different places. Uh, main difference here is this, this let's see in the resistor library it doesn't have a 3D model. Here it does but everything else is the same. But let's go ahead and use the RCL one. And so we'll go vloop and I'll put another one here. Vloop 
Again, I'm being overly pedantic about making space in here. So we'll connect these over here, connect this up to here. Okay, I am I'm not gonna bother pulling this out. We'll assume those are connected. All right. Um, we need to hook up the ground. So the MOTM standard, uh, that's a little close looking. That's kind of awkward looking. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to move this whole mess over here. I'll move this over, move this over, move this over. Uh, let me pull out my split tool. Doop. Split that. There we go. Ah, come back here. All right. So let's hook up the ground. Let me make sure that this all is connected the way I think it is. Okay, it is. And what we'll do is we'll hook the spot here between the capacitors up to there, right? Yes, we want to merge everything to ground. Okay, so we need RV plus and RV minus. So I'll copy RV plus. Stick it here. Copy the V minus. Stick it down here. Wire it up. Yep, we want to connect that. All right. So now every place that needs power is getting it from this connector here without us drawing wires everywhere. The one thing I would like to do just as a matter of hygiene is to put some bypass capacitors in at the chip itself. If you're just making a board with just all this, you really wouldn't need to bother, but it's a good habit to get into. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. So either way, I'm going to have to expose the power pins of this op amp. Now, a standard thing to do, well, Eagle supposedly has ways that it will internally wire this all up automatically. I've never had much luck with that. So I like to impl implicitly expose the power pins of the chips and explicitly wire them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the invoke command, <laughs> which is rather dramatically named on this chip. Whoop, that's not, I need to actually use it. Invoke, invoke, all right. Actually, before I invoke, let me undo, I'd actually had a wire there. So I'm gonna invoke and invoke here. So the next means, this would actually pull out a new chip. But if I had only used say three op amps and a quad op amp, this would let me expose the fourth one if I wanted to do something with it. But the main thing I want to expose here is the power. Now, the power is kind of nice. The way the power symbol works is it fits one of these triangles here nicely. And then you could hook up the power there. I'm not fond of doing that, though. The power is part of the plumbing that makes the whole circuit work, but it's not part of the logical flow of the chip. And by logic, I don't mean purely digital logic, per se, just how the, the chip's actually processing signals. So what I like to do is I actually like to get the power pins of the chip, and I like to put it down here where I pulled power in. So let's put that in here. What I'll do here is I'll just wire it up. I, I could wire it to V+, plus, but let's wire it up like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type info and click on the net here and see it says V minus. So by you can get up info on different parts by clicking on them and find out whatever. But the main thing I'm doing here is I want to make sure that this really is V plus that's getting hooked to the top. Okay, so that's the power. Let me move it out a bit because what I, I often like to do, let me pull out split again here to square this up. Doop, doop, doop. Uh, come back here. All right, doop, doop, doop. Square that up. So what I'll do here is now I'll actually add in the local bypass caps for the capacitor. Again, when you lay out the PCB, you're not going to stick all these capacitors side by side. I just like to logically have them all in one spot here in the schematic. And when I lay out the PCB, I know I want to put the smaller bypass capacitors next to the power pins of the chip, both to sort of locally clean up power going in and also in case you know, weirdness happens in the chip and there's gunk coming out through the power pin that's also getting shorted to ground and so it's not corrupting anything else. Remember, the power pins on the chips aren't magical. They're another input and output to the chip and they're part of the circuit like anything else. I like to use both for bypass and for um, just standard non-electrolytic caps in general. We'll often use this. So this C-EU050- 
025X075. So I find this, it has a little bit of contrast with the resistor footprint. It's a little bit shorter. You know, sometimes there's capacitors that are much bigger. If you're doing this as a more pro design, you would spec out which capacitors you want to use where, and some would be bigger with the footprint. I just tend to use this, and if the capacitor I wind up using is bigger, I just sort of bend and squish the wires, <laughs> you know. Again, this shows up two places. Let's use the one up here. Oh, this one doesn't come up with a symbol in either, whatever. I mean, it has a symbol. I'm saying it doesn't have one of these big, fancy 3D models. So I'll stick one here. Actually, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'll stick one here, and I'll stick one down here. And I'm not going to be too precious about leaving some space in here. We'll assume this is all connected to ground. I'll show you how to double check that in a second. We'll connect this up here, connect this down here. I want to make, if I want to make sure everything's connected correctly, I'll just pick this up and move it. So I'll see everything's nice connected to that pin. And those are my local bypass caps. Let's see. So for value, uh, everybody in the universe uses a 1.1 uh, 1 .1 microfarad cap for these. So I'll use that too. Oh, you want Again, instead of writing 0.1u for micro, I'm using the u to replace the dot. So if this is ever copied, or nowadays it would be if it's printed on a mediocre laser printer where, or where the, let's say the toner's running out. If the dot gets lost, that could be a problem because that would suddenly, if this dot got lost, first of all, the zero there might be a hint that something got lost, but the, uh, or especially this would be nasty, right? If you just did this as 0.1u and you didn't have the zero in front, it'd be very easy for that dot to get lost and turn into a 1u cap. Anyway, so I'm going to do it 0.1 where I'm using the microfarad in place of the decimal point. I did that in both places. So... Oh, I need to put a value for the caps coming to the board. Ever, you'll see twenty-two micro also, and others. But a lot of people use ten U here. Um, well, that works. I want to make this a little less crowded. Let me move this over here and this over here. Uh, whereas I'll keep. Yeah, I'll, I'll move this here. Maybe move this guy over here. These are okay. Yeah, okay, so I only have one chip. And if I had more chips, I would lay out more of these power pins and lay out more of these bypass caps. Let's see what else. Uh, the only other thing that is good here uh, you might want to do is, um, okay, I'll move this up here. What I'll do is I'll use some text, and I'll put in, I'll say, this is the adaptation of Korg MS-20 of the Korg MS-20 uh, MVCA adaptation, I'll say by Aaron Lanterman. I want to make it clear that I'm not making, you know, I didn't design the original circuit. And you might want to put a date in here. Okay, it's April 19th, 2020. All right, uh, where should we put that? Let's put that, let's put it here, sure. All right, so now I've got I've got a schematic. The next step would be to do the layout. Uh, if you wanted to share this online, say in a blog post, you would typically export image. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Don't think I am though. Zoom to fit. So what we'll do is we'll say export. If you want to share this, like a, write a blog post about it, you would say export image. And I, I find 150 too small. I like to use 200 for this. Uh, so we'll say this is the MS50 MCA scam for schematic, and this will save it. Okay, yeah, that did indeed uh, save as a PNG file. I guess that's the default save. I was ex expecting it to prompt me, but I forgot it just saves as a PNG. So this is something you can put on a blog post or easily paste into PowerPoint slides or something where, you know, otherwise if you just put the SEM file, people wouldn't see it. And to look at it all, they would have to install Eagle if they had already, et cetera. So this is a nice way to uh, show off your work. So then the next thing you'd want to do is actually lay out the board. Now, We'll start that in another video. I just want to point out, the moment you create the board, 
you want to make sure that you always have the board and the schematic up while you're editing it. You want those up simultaneously because if those get out of sync and Eagle starts complaining about it, it can be really painful to try to get them back into sync. But we'll close this route here and I'll start another one where I actually uh, lay out the PCB. <laughs>